Well, hello everyone. Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the MI Gardener channel. Today, we're going to be talking about peach trees and canker. It's something that is not a fun topic to talk about, but is one that I think will serve as a very beneficial learning experience for all of you that are growing stone fruits, specifically peaches, which are the most prone to canker. And it's going to help uh, to resolve some of your, your concerns, your questions, and also maybe help you to not be so drastic when you see it. Because canker is something that happens to all stone fruits, um, specifically peaches are very prone to it, but often our reaction to it is far worse and far more drastic than it needs to be. So when I first got it, I obviously knew right what it was and I thought I'm gonna let it just kind of, I'm gonna let it do its thing so I can have a good video for all of you. But I see so many people that post on Facebook and Instagram, they're saying, well, I lost my peach tree. I cut down my peach tree. In fact, I saw a picture Oh my goodness, I saw a picture of someone that showed a peach tree laying on the ground. I thought, what the heck, they cut down their peach tree. And in the thing said, canker, what a bummer. And I thought, you just cut down your whole peach tree because you had canker? <laughs> and yes, it is quite that drastic for some people. Canker is not something that you need to jump to conclusions over and start hacking the heck out of your tree. Canker is a fungus that is spread through a, it's, it's, a, it's spores that are transferred through the air and land on your peach trees. They land during cold and wet climates where there might be open tissue or damaged tissue or weak tissue on your tree. This often occurs when people carelessly prune. Now, I have not carelessly pruned my tree. In fact, I've only ever pruned it last year. And, uh, and we, so we did not get canker that way. Canker most likely came in the form of just some weak or, or damaged tissue down on the lower branches because uh, that's where, the, that's where the, the people that were growing this tree at the nursery pruned off some of those lower branches and they may have pruned uh, at an inopportune time to make the tree look good. Whereas, and, you know, whereas had they waited until mid season, um, they might not have had a, a great looking tree for sale, but they also would not have spread canker to this tree possibly and you know you never really know when you're going to get it or where it came from but understanding how to control it or the, the preventative steps are important so step one if you have canker make sure that you do not prune when it's cold and wet that will spread canker it'll also uh, be able to uh, contract canker much easier number two is if you do have canker do not prune one tree and then move to another without first sanitizing your pruning blades. Take a little bottle of isopropyl alcohol, rub down the blades, and that ensures that any canker you do have on this tree is not transmitted to your following tree. The third thing is that regular fungicides do not work on canker. That is because fungicides are topical and canker actually lives within the tissue of the tree. It always thrives in weak tissue meaning if you have a weak growing tree, it's going to survive in that tissue. If it's on a branch or it's a specific branch you can see, you can remove that branch. That helps to eliminate the canker, but it doesn't always prevent it indefinitely. And so sometimes it's best just to leave it on. And you might be thinking, what, leave it on? What, what are you talking about? That's because canker is not, and I repeat, is not an aggressive fungus. It is a very weak fungus, meaning a rapidly growing tree will often outgrow the damage done by canker, meaning it will be aesthetically unpleasing to the eye, and it might affect a few branches here and there, but overall, when you have a healthy growing tree that is thriving, that healthy tissue is not able to be a host for the canker uh, fungus, meaning that it's going to be unaffected anyways. Now, I do have canker in a few different stages here that I wanna show you what it looks like. It is a little bit of gross, but just know that uh, you know, if you're going with a, a topical, like a copper fungicide or maybe an inorganic fungicide, it's going to do absolutely nothing. Now, the next thing that you can do is a systemic fungicide. I would never, ever, ever recommend a systemic fungicide because you're actually going to be consuming the fruit of this crop. Systemic fungicides should only ever be done on flowers and ornamentals, things you're not going to be eating because number one, they're inorganic and I don't ever recommend going inorganic. And number two, because it's actually a chemical that is being put into this plant 
to prevent the fungus from being able to take hold. So don't ever rec I never recommend doing a systemic fungicide. So come on and check out what the, uh, what the canker is doing. Very telltale signs are you know, red lobes on the leaves or white puffy lesions on the leaves and also a, a sap that's orange and kind of leaks from some of the wounds um, that can happen in early season when the, when the, when the uh, plant is stretching and growing. Okay, so looking at this tree here, we have what seems to be a very healthy tree and that's because it is. See, nothing to worry about. That's why I've not been freaking out and why I've just let the canker do its own thing because I wanted to allow it to take hold enough to show its signs first so that you all could, uh, could learn from this. So it starts out with these little lesions here. These little lesions are almost like little bumps, little bumps on the leaves. That is the canker that is forming on the leaves that will then blossom and spread its spores much like a fungus. Oh, it is a fungus. So it spreads its spores throughout the air. And those spores, they land on little, little weak tissue. This is kind of a bad, there you go. You can see there though, how that orange sap is flowing out of there. That is where canker has landed and is actually living systemically in this tissue. You can see over here, another one more advanced one. This one is getting ready to blossom. It turns white, it turns white. But you can see as a whole, the tree is not overrun by, by this because again, it's not a rapidly growing fungus. It is a very, very weak fungus that is out, you know, it's easily outgrown by all this beautiful new growth here that it's unaffected. So coming over here, we can start to see some of the later forms of it that after it's, after it's blossomed, after it has released its spores, it turns red. And that's what a lot of gardeners see right there is the red. That is the telltale sign of canker if you do not catch the white. Now this is when it's spreading its spores. So that is in its spore spreading stage. This is in its mature stage. We have a little bit more over here and you can start to see what it looks like. So what I can do is I can take this branch right off if I would like to, but because it's healthy and it's got a lot of new growth, I'm not even gonna worry about it because there's a slight effect here. If I want to, a good preventive method is just to take off these leaves before they're able to spread, before that canker is able to blossom, just take it, throw the leaves on the ground, not usually recommended to throw them on the ground, but that's what I do. And, uh, and I don't really mind too much. They recommend burning them. All of the agricultural extensions say, burn them. Well, I just throw them on the ground and they usually get fried up by the sun anyways. So, uh, but yeah, you just wanna go in through here and you can remove some of the foliage that has canker. Uh, you don't have to remove the whole branch because it's really just blossoming and you're just preventing it from spreading to other trees that might not be affected yet. So this tree is affected, this tree is not affected, and basically I just wanna prevent the, the fungus from spreading over to this tree. What you can do is you can take a topical and you can spray this much like you would preventing blight. You can take baking soda, you can take something like uh, copper fungicide, you can spray down this crop as a preventative from this, but once you have it, you cannot really get rid of it. Another thing that you can do is purchase varieties that are more canker resistant than others. Now they've never come up with a completely canker resistant crop, but this Alberta peach is extremely canker resistant, meaning that if it gets it, it's because it's very weak. In a healthy thriving tree, it should never get canker because it's been bred for that resistance. So we do have an Alberta peach here that's just thriving and it's doing wonderfully. Now, the final thing that I wanted to note is that when you do have canker, if you, trans if you transfer the canker from that tree through pruners over to this tree, the this tree can get canker because you're actually cutting and pruning and all that sap is coming in contact with that systemic fun uh, fungus that is then going to be in the system of this tree. So you do not want to just go willy-nilly pruning because then a you know, a canker resistant tree can get canker. 
So it is a, it is definitely not a fun thing to encounter, but it is one that is, it's very nominal in terms of actual issues caused. So I hope you all enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. And oh, and one more thing I wanted to talk about um, is the presence of ants. So if you are not aware that you, that you have canker, you haven't seen any signs of canker, but you're starting to see ants climbing up and down the tree, chances are that is caused from the sap that is leaking from those, from those wounds in the bark of the tree, and the, the ants are actually feeding on that sap. So many people think they have aphids, and so they treat for aphids. When in, when in reality, you're not really treating anything at all, you're just spraying down the tree with chemicals, weakening its immune system because the sap is sugary from the, the, you know, the sugars being created through photosynthesis, and the ants are feeding on those sugars because obviously they like sugar. And so that is caused from the canker that is opening up in a wound, and that's what the ants are feeding on. They're, they're usually always uh, caused from, or the ants are usually always there because of the cause of canker, not because of aphids. Um, so, and, and you can get aphids on your trees as well, but more often than not, it's from canker. And so I just wanted to point that out too, because so many people uh, share pictures of ants on their peach trees, and, and yet they don't see any aphids, and that is why. So I hope you all enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. If you did, give this video a huge thumbs up. It really helps us out. Make sure to share it with a friend if you think they'd enjoy it, because that's how we grow, because uh, people like you that, that enjoy our content, and also, if you have not yet grown a peach tree, make sure to do it. They are some of the most amazing trees. I absolutely love you know, just growing them. They're fun to grow, they're fast growing. They, they give beautiful shade and beautiful fruit, and it's one that I recommend you try. So as always, this is Luke from the MI Gardener channel reminding you to grow bigger go home. I'll catch you all later. See ya, bye.